No, oh, people are in here. Yeah, it was good. It was good. So I think that How to Survive the Wild West is my best video so far to date. And that's usually really hard for me to say because it's like choosing a favorite child. And unlike my parents, it's really hard for me to choose a favorite child. So this was hard to say, but I do think it is my favorite video that I've made. I think it's my best work and I'm happy that it is being received well. Okay, there's a lot of people in here now. I should probably get started. All right, so this is my director's commentary for the How to Survive the Wild West YouTube video that I put out four days ago now. So this video is very near and dear to me. I had a lot of fun with it. I kind of like went back to my roots and focused less on what I think people would want to see and more of what I would have fun making. And I was just in a cowboy mood when I came up with this uh, Western mood, you know, Red Dead Redemption, all that fun stuff. And uh, I thought it would be really cool to make a video that was kind of like a sequel to my How to Survive Victorian London video and do How to Survive the Wild West. I really like the premise of kind of like framing history in a way where it's like, how can you go about daily life in this time period or in this era of history? That makes it a very daunting task because you kind of have to learn about all aspects of life or at least a large portion of it for usually a large time period. So simplifying it down into a digestible video can be very hard, hence why this video is 23 and a half minutes long. Easily the longest video I've ever made, which also made it take so long to come out. But I think it's really fun doing and worth doing and also break down some stereotypes that a lot of people have or misconceptions that people have in a fun and hopefully comedic way. So that's kind of like the idea behind making this video here. But without further ado, let's just go right into it. But what if you just so happen to be best friends with an 80-year-old theoretical physicist who got stranded in 1885 and needs you to take his EPA violating time machine built out of a stupidly overhyped car to rescue him from your high school bully's great-grandfather. <laughs> Don't you worry, kiddo. Seeing as how the situation is all too likely, I decided to put together a little guide for all you McCree wannabes to show you exactly how to survive the Wild West. Okay, so we'll stop there real quick, but right off the bat, for those of you who have watched my videos recently or a few times, you might notice this is a very similar intro to another video. The other um, How to Survive video actually uh, started off with a very similar framework where I'm kind of like, do you ever watch Downton Abbey and find yourself thinking, God, I wish I was born in the Victorian era? Well, you're stupid. Firstly, because Downton Abbey takes place 11 years after the Victorian era, silly goose. And secondly, because life in Victorian London was far from the, I don't know, some shit like that. Blanking right now. But basically, I wanted to like frame it the same way because I thought it was funny because they both were off by 11 years, specifically referring to Red Dead Redemption 1, which uh, I think is the more fun between the two games. But yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 is in the Wild West period, so to speak. But Red Dead Redemption 1 is actually technically, according to a lot of scholars, after after the Wild West period. So I thought that it'd be a, a great way to kind of like do a similar intro, a similar segue into the topic. And also the bird here, you may notice has a better attire than typical. And that's because Cass drew the lovely little hat here in scarf with the blue jay feather. I absolutely love how it came out so much better than anything I could have ever photoshopped and put together. It is amazing. So thank you so much for doing that Cass. Again, it came out looking amazing. I wouldn't have wished it any other way and um, I'm probably going to ask you to do more hats and stuff in the future so thank you so much for that and then I also wanted to find like a, a creative way to go back in time like I did in the first one which was if you remember a Freaky Friday situation where you body swapped with like a bona fide Victorian Londonite so I did something similar but this time with a another movie pop culture analogy this one being something that actually works for the Wild West where in Back to the Future Part 3 they did go to the quote unquote Wild West. So I thought that would be a fun way to do it. And of course, rip into the DeLorean a little bit because it's just like a car with a cool door and that's pretty much it. It's an unreliable piece of shit. But I'm not really a car guy. I just know I, I can make fun of that one. So haha, <laughs> eat shit, car people. Oh, and also I got a few comments, a handful of comments saying, um, who's McCree? That's Cassidy. Kind of like joking around or saying like, should we cancel Blue Jay for saying McCree? But I think that was mostly a joke. No one actually wants to cancel me for that but yeah I have some strong opinions about the whole McCree name change thing so for those of you who aren't aware Jesse McCree the character from Overwatch was named after I believe like a developer or some employee at Blizzard who then later was let go for various scandal stuff that makes him a pretty bad person so because this character was named after that individual and all this stuff came out they decided to take away the name Jesse McCree and put Cole 
Cassidy in in its stead. I understand the reasoning behind doing something like that, but I also find it almost as if you're giving more power to the the individual, the real life person, than they really deserve. Because I think if you are saying that person is so important that people are tying this fictional McCree to that real life person, and we need to change the name so we can't give them any more credit or anything, then you're kind of like giving them some additional power than they actually deserve. I think, personally, that Jesse McCree here in the game has garnered a bigger reputation and a larger legacy bigger than the origins behind whatever reasoning was given to the naming convention of the character. So I think that he has grown bigger than the person he was named after. And by keeping the name McCree, you're kind of forgetting the other person. And instead, making that name synonymous with this fictional person. So when people hear it out in the wild, they might not think, oh, who's Jesse McCree? Oh, I guess that's a guy who did some fucked up stuff. Instead, they'll think, oh, Jesse McCree, the hero cowboy from Overwatch or whatever. I think that that is honestly a better route to go as opposed to changing the name just because you're afraid that it was named after someone who didn't have a very good moral compass or I don't I don't remember or know exactly what they did to be honest I think it was something assaulty in nature I don't know I can't really speculate I don't really want to look into it and talk about that or whatever I just think that that is a poor reason to take the name away from a fictional character so I say McCree out of principle <laughs> it's not that deep though I just think that it's better to say McCree also Jesse McCree is a much cooler name than Cole Cassidy, let's be real. Ah, here we are, Alex. The Wild West. The area of the United States that's vaguely defined by historians as being somewhere... Uh, the stunning landscapes are crawling with rich resources. Massive herds of American bison roam from the Great Basin to the Appalachians, while the expansive flatlands find themselves home to enough corn, beans, and squash to bring a tear to any Midwestern grandmother's eye. So I'll just go over a few things there before it goes too much further. So for those of you who know me, <laughs> know that I like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure quite a bit, and ever since I've kind of gotten into the series, I've been making subtle references, or maybe not so subtle ref references to JoJo, whenever I find it kind of like fitting. So the back in time animation is actually the same sound effect and animation for an ability in the Jojo Bizarre Adventure series where um some certain characters for those who don't want spoilers can stop time and it does that essentially where it like shakes the screen, inverts the colors, and then time stops for like a certain length of time, like like 10 seconds or something. But also because of the clock sound effect, I thought it was like perfectly fitting for a back in time animation, especially because I was having some trouble figuring out like what's a great way to do that. I don't want to like do the whole like fire track, like DeLorean reaching however many miles per hour needed to go like in the movies. I thought there'd be a lot of animation work for what was uh, ultimately a little payoff, but I thought it'd be fun to do a JoJo animation there. So that's what that was. And a lot of people really liked that, but people who didn't know what JoJo was still, I'm sure, appreciated it. Actually, I did get some comments saying, like, wow, Blue Jay didn't have to go that hard with the back-in-time effect. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that totally was all original ideas there. Also, this little skit thing Defined here. Defined by historians as being somewhere... I spent like days trying to find like a definitive map or range of what the Wild West was. And there really isn't a strong definition of like the territory that would be defined as the Wild West. What it really kind of like came down to was, I believe like the most at least agreed upon or cons general consensus of what Wild West is, where the Wild West is, is pretty much just the frontier line and west from there. So that can be Canada. It can be partially Mexico. It's just kind of like West. So honestly, like West of the Mississippi could be defined as the Wild West. At one point in time, the Midwest, hence the name Midwest, was the West, the Western frontier. So it's just kind of like it's a moving region that was colloquially changed depending on like what year it was for the time period. So some people think that it's just like a very concentrated group of states, kind of like in the Southwest or maybe including a little bit more of the plains up here. And some people say like, ah, it's like New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, uh, and some people are like, no, Texas is not in the Wild West at all. Or like people have very strong opinions on it. But I think the general consensus among historians is that it is just the Western frontier territory. The lesser developed areas are lesser explored by at least, you know, Western civilization, meaning white, white people like the Yeah. You know what I mean. Geography ranges from grassy plains so large, you might just call them great, to mountains so rugged, you could even say they're rocky, to deserts so arid, they've earned the rank of being the second hottest place on Earth. Second only to Markiplier's OnlyFans. And, of course, to accompany all these diverse ecosystems and resources are an equal number of diverse American Indian cultures to live off them. Oh my gosh, this... 
This is beautiful. You're right. This is not how I pictured the Wild West at all. So do I just like give my resume to a chief or? Ah, hold up. Don't go all dances with wolves quite yet, Alex. This piece of junk took us too far back. Just gotta calibrate this flux bullshitator. Okay, good to go. Hop. Okay, so I guess a few things before we move on. So yeah, I did a lot of like rhyming, some fancy wordplay. I'm a little bitch for that kind of stuff. Some people noticed the the phrasing that I used for the native inhabitants of the Americas. So throughout the video, I change what I say. I'll say both Native Americans. I'll say American Indians. I and mean, some people might feel strongly opinionated towards one term or the other. I remember I got a commenter that pointed out that I shouldn't have said American India or India because it didn't come from India. Like, that's a, it was a misconception as to where that name originated from, the term Indian. But if you look into it, or if you just talk around enough in life, you'll find that different tribes, different groups of people prefer American Indian, or prefer Native American, or prefer just Native, or American, or Indigenous people, or it, there's a whole plethora of terms that are considered appropriate to describe that group of people. And it makes sense because people often think of Native Americans as just one you know culture and it couldn't be further from the truth the americas populated by such diverse cultures people that are as different as a nowadays american from a like modern day vietnamese or someone just like disconnected very different culturally that's why it's it's very different for what people prefer and so it's hard to generalize or put one term on all the peoples all the native people that lived in these regions because they all prefer different names and honestly the most accurate way you can go about talking about this these groups of people is just literally by their tribal name so it's hard you know i wanted to try to like appease everyone make sure i didn't like rustle too many feathers i don't think i think most people are like not that sensitive about it i'm sure but i wanted to include both terms at least just because I know some people prefer one over the other so and then also these pictures here they show different cultures so these are these are Pacific Northwestern natives you have Apaches right here and these are Shoshone uh, natives on the plains don't go all dances with wolves quite yet Alex this piece of junk and then too far back. dances with wolves is a uh, movie there. about like a okay, former Civil War soldier a former Civil War soldier kind of like becoming one with a native tribe <laughs> so seeing like the better way of life yeah, I made a joke reference to that. Perfect for manifesting destinies and Oh, yeah. Starting. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mention that. Good good pointing that out, Cass. So it's kind of hard to notice, but going back in time or like correcting the time period, the environment changes. So you have at first leaves on these like little like shrubby trees. You have more greenery. The grass is green. The air is clean. It's beautiful. It's a paradise. And then when you go back in time further, there is like this dust layer that's moving. The leaves are gone. There's more brown. There's less less grass, less all that. So basically the environment was kind of worsening with the American settlers coming in partially because of just like, you know, upturning the dirt, upturning the earth, all the trains going on. There were some studies that linked the introduction of trains to potentially building up to the dust bowls that would engulf a lot of this region in the decades after the Wild West. So because it wasn't quite dust bowl time yet, I made the area just dusty-ish. But what about all the bison? <laughs> Well, Alex, surely we can't have all those 2,000 pound hunks of meat waltzing around on train tracks. Think of how dangerous that would be to our schedules. So part of what makes these videos take so fucking long is I put too much effort into the shit that's only on the screen for like a second. Like I drew like this whole fucking train. This took me hours to draw. It's up here for like what, a second? <laughs> was it worth it? I don't know. It was fun for me at least, I guess. So those numbers were knocked down a couple million to open things up a bit, but only after we graciously borrowed their trails for railroad paths. Thanks, Bison. What? The population has rebounded since then, by the way. It was knocked down at its lowest to around 300 at least the estimates say and since then they've been recovering thanks to a lot of conservation efforts and all that although they did introduce a new problem of genetic bottlenecking because you had you know tens of millions of these animals and then you narrow it down to 300 a little bit of incest has to happen to keep things going you have a little less genetic diversity after stuff like that happens if you could imagine so it's an interesting problem that modern day cons conservationists are dealing with but at least it's better now right now there were a ton of options and with how expansive and diverse the various regions are, you really shouldn't generalize life in the Wild West. Anyway, let's have you pick between a cowboy, miner, or prostitute. Oh, uh... <laughs> so I spent a long time trying to figure out what careers I should narrow this down to. I definitely wanted to cover cowboys. Uh, and after that, I was like, I don't know, like, dentists? There were a lot of careers, and like I mentioned, the region is fucking huge, and there are 
tons of different industries that were more prevalent in different areas than others. So I'm like, all right, I'll just make that the joke. I'm just going to generalize all this shit into, you know, the West that you see in Hollywood and all that. So cowboys, miners, and hookers, baby. Let's go the way God intended it. Cowboy Philbert Cheese Steak the Bunny Defender then rode off into the sunset, forever to be remembered for his heroic defense of Cindy Klein's honor by shooting and stabbing an unarmed foreigner. Good spot to pause. Can I just say I'm very proud of how that turned out. I got the inspiration for this little like segment off of like I remember seeing this like I think it was like 4chan or Reddit or something. Someone made this like I guess copy pasta or whatever of like Wild West history be like and it was just kind of like a bunch of like absurd shit. <laughs> I think they said like the second Tuesday and so I like was like on the 13th month as like my little homage to that where I got the idea from. So I made like my own version basically based off of that dumb idea and I like intended to animate it as like more intensively than I normally animate things and so I, I realized later when I was talking to a friend about this Vax is he's in here these techniques that I was using in this was called parallaxing like this right here out on the street the cowboy approached him and there's three different layers here that I'm moving at different velocities to kind of like give a false 3d feeling to a 2d image ultimately so I'm moving the cowboy up the fastest the background up the slowest and then the rabbit fist are here rabbit down are slow too out. so it gives a little bit of a 3d feel to it and uh i i love how it turned out and i wanted to be like stylistic with it like i, I always get all artsy and shit you know i've got like these silhouettes going on and this was just like regular frame by frame animation that i did animating like this like draw and like the stabbing of the leg and all that this is also parallaxing where i'm moving the cowboy the fastest and then the mammal fister second fastest and then the background the slowest so that's how i i did these techniques and i think it came out looking awesome and cinematic as fuck if i do want to stroke my ego a little bit there and then yeah like the blurring yeah of course stuff like that but yeah that was kind of like the idea behind this just like make some absurd ass shit and um treat it like this very dramatic kind of like just making fun of how dramatic and over the top westerns could be and how inaccurate they ultimately were that's kind of like the point that's being driven home here your day of cattle driving horse wiping and repair providing was lonely and dull, which might sound like a dream at first to you introverts, I know my audience, until you take into account the pay of $25 to $40 a month, exhausting manual labor, and feeling almost as disgusted with yourself as I hope KFC's head chef feels. This thing is an abomination. Oh my god, the fact that this was a like going through like advertising campaigns and people were hype about it is crazy. Two fucking chicken breasts put together with like, what, cheese and bacon in the middle? What are we? Who are we? Is that a thing people want to eat? <laughs> that looks like something I would love to be honest, but oh my god, would I feel like a dirty little whore eating that. Jesus Christ, I'm proud to be American. I'm very conflicted about this. Um, I guess other thing to note here, I'm going through like what life as a cowboy was like. The $25 to $40 a month isn't great. Granted, you do typically have your food and lodging paid for, but like considering that you're working like 15 to 20 hours a day, $25 to $40 a month adjusted for inflation, I think it's just like a little over a thousand dollars. It kind of depends on like what year you're considering. It was really hard for me to nail down pay per year and depending on where you adjust inflation from between like 1865 and 1900 this is a very different number that could be great or bad yeah it's it's not ideal if you have a family but as a single guy you know like out with the cows in the wilderness all day not terrible you get your housing and your food taken care of you go into town get drunk we'll get to that fuck hookers we'll get to that uh, and call it a day your horse is your best friend until one wrong move turns you into its best training wheel oh i guess like one little uh crossover mention that might deserve to be said. This problem was actually addressed with a little fun shoe called Krakos, which if you remember, I covered in my second fashion video. So a lot of people pointed out in the comments, something I didn't mention in that video, a big reason why Krakos were famous, like the pointy toe shoes and why they kind of like persisted to this day with winkle pickers and all that is because it was great for like putting in and out of stirrups. So like if you were to fall off your horse, it would slip right on out, I think. Hopefully, who knows, maybe you'd get dragged along like this poor little chap did. And there's plenty of videos you can find on a lot of people doing it, so clearly they don't work all the time. Craig, they hit the Pentagon. Okay, that's... <laughs> I think that was, like, the most commented on joke in the video. People loved that 
Pentagon joke. I spent a long time trying to figure out what would be a great punchline there because like there's a lot you can do with like something that spooks you and is kind of like unexpected. That I eventually came up with but there was also um, some other ideas that I had like I uh, had the idea of having the second cow that comes up being Craig's girlfriend or something saying like Craig you're pasteurized right? <laughs> like an S- like a dumb punny STD joke or something that almost won. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious and then uh, my friend Artex <laughs> suggested a really cursed version of this where instead of a cow coming up you have like this Craig here like eating the grass and then like off in the distance you hear well time to go cow tipping and then you hear like a belt get unbuckled and then his eyes go wide which is like dark and fucked up but kind of hilarious so i think i might animate that and throw that on my patreon as a bonus joke so you guys can at least see it for those of you that are degenerates um so give me money if you want to see that another thing to note i've seen like a few comments saying like oh my god this is is this a tribute or a um a reference to sam Manella? uh oh my god he called the cow craig so i think in a video in the past Sam Manella, another YouTuber, called a cow Craig. That's a complete coincidence, by the way. This was not like a intentional reference or anything. I think it's funny that we came up with the same name. I was just like, what's a random off the cuff name I could give to a fucking cow? That's kind of how I do all my names. You know, Alex, Craig. I have a character named Tim and a character named Timmy. Both recurring characters. Like, it's not super original. They're kind of like easy one, two syllable names that I come up with a lot of the time so no that's just a complete coincidence that was not intentional at all if you were thinking that by the way another thing to note the character that i'm using in this video that i'm taking back in time and like trying to like set up in the wild west is alex alex has appeared a few other times but the other main time was the how to survive victorian london video is where i took alex back in time that's different from tim tim is who i used in my radiation videos uh who i like tied up and gagged you know he's the one that i taught like radioactive history to and radioactive science. Those are different, different guys that I kidnap and torture for fun. Riding on horseback for thousands of miles is not as easy as it seems. Something horse jockeys, Aiden Ross, or others used to ride and get a test to. So the, <laughs> this is funny for people who know, but those of you who don't, Aiden Ross is a controversial figure who is often made fun of for being kind of obsessed with Andrew Tate. And this is like an infamous clip where he, this is Aiden Ross. He was sitting here. Andrew Tate was sitting here. Andrew Tate left. And then as you can see, <laughs> <laughs> Aiden Ross comes up and like gives the seat a good old sniff, a good old snort, if you will. Just like taking a line of that Andrew, Andrew Taint, Taint or whatever, you know? I, I, I guess minor. Brilliant choice. No, you're later. Trailing off the tail end. Sign up to brilliant.org slash Do the it. Cal- it is actually kind of fun. I had a lot of fun <laughs> using Brilliant. I do use all the products I advertise just to make that blatantly clear. I don't just like take money and say, fuck it. Brilliant is great. And uh, yeah, go ahead and do free trial. Link, link. Use the link. Asphyxiation starts with an A. Some minds would utilize- I had to find a reason to, you know, gag and bind Alex here. I'd love doing that to my characters. I don't know why. (laughs) Silica exposure was also a problem, and miners would often inhale large amounts of it on the job, which would tickle their lungs a little bit. And by tickle, I mean silicosis, which became tuberculosis which they died from at 10 times the national average. So that wasn't all miners, but it's just a way to highlight the dangers of being unprotected in mines, just kind of in general, you know? So I highlighted basically the statistic here, but basically a study was done where uh, in Butte, Montana, there were miners that died at 10 times the national average for tuberculosis, and they figured out it was because of silica exposure. So yeah, just to highlight why safety is very important, guys. Follow OSHA guidelines and EPA stuff and all the b- bells and whistles. After to go? There's plenty of room. Need to count to ten? Why don't you use your fingers? Just kidding. In a lot of ways, frontier mining was like a casino. You go in hoping to strike it rich, but inside you find flashing lights, bodily fluids, and in the end, the house always wins. As you can tell, I love going through like, uh, linguistical roller coasters with my scripts, where I don't know, that's how I like to make my videos. It feels like there's a flow, a beat to them, and so I love doing stuff like that. It, I guess maybe that is like some inspiration from CGB Grey. I love how he does it. So I guess that's kind of where I derived that that style from a little bit. This casino analogy I thought was really on the nose. It was great. But yeah. Inside you find flashing 
flashing lights, explosions, notorious in mining, uh, and slot machines. Lights, bodily fl- And uh, this line was written before this video went viral. So basically, it's kind of common, from what I understand, for casino, pe- casino goers to be so addicted to slot machines, at least the legend goes, that they would like piss and shit at the slot machine because they were like too addicted to get up or I don't know, maybe too drunk or high. And then this video comes out with this like girl with a like a Versace bag or I don't know brands but like she's like sitting at the slot machine on a phone and then there's just like liquid coming from underneath her which would be absolutely insane if she was just urinating there it could also be a leaking water bottle it's not really confirmed but I did highlight this little this here in case anyone knew of that video just saying like while maybe it's not actually urine it isn't unheard of for people to piss on casino floors so (laughs) I just thought the timing was great I had written this recorded this then this video went viral so I used it in the video for visuals most women in the west pursued a variety of enterprises to make money but don't you worry Alex hookers certainly did exist and while it wasn't most women's profession less competition means more clientele that intersection was kind of to help dispel some common misconceptions around prostitutes in the West. Because there's a lot that kind of get pushed around that aren't entirely true. Even by, like, popular people, like if you've heard of Adam Ruins Everything, he has a segment where he talks about how prostitutes were, like, the people to actually develop the West and all that. And while they definitely had, like, a significant contribution to the identity and development of the West with, um like, civilization and all that, it wasn't like they were, like, these, the sole creators or, like, like civilizers of the West. It's kind of exaggerated in his video and I kind of don't like how that was uh, done, but I wanted to put a little bit of reality into it where, yeah, they existed, but it wasn't like everyone was a prostitute. And I actually talked about this with a Wild West historian, a dude who did a lot of decades in study of uh, censuses for like Colorado and the California air regions um, to ask about basically the prevalence of it. And like he pointed out statistics that showed like, you know, a handful of percent of a given population of women in certain towns at most could be prostitutes. It wasn't like everyone was a hooker or like half of the women were hookers. And it wasn't like they came to areas where there were camps and just made it into a town like Adam Ruins everything describes. Maybe it happens sometimes, but it wasn't like the majority of cases. And that makes sense. Why would you come out to an area to set up shop like that if it wasn't as developed as you would hopefully want? But they existed, and I made Alex into a hooker for our enjoyment. Why choose the scandalous life? Well, maybe you're a widow in need of cash, or a savvy entrepreneur looking to score big after a crypto ranch didn't pan out. You can tell how old some of this writing is where I'm making like a crypto zoo reference. That drama was a little bit more relevant like half a year ago. (laughs) While your clients are catching feelings, you'll be catching diseases like their Pokemon. Look, you've even got a few legendaries. Luckily, it's nothing a little visit from the Mercury Fairy can't fix. Basically a reference about how Mercury used to be used as a as a cure back in the day, especially for a lot of those STDs. They would just inject you with some of the, the tasty metal. And yeah, you're cured. Sure. Many prostitutes perfected the art of relaxation to help them deal with the woes of the trade. She does look calm. Yeah, opiates will do that. What, they just abused painkillers? Come now, that wasn't their only method. There's also codeine, chloroform, laudanum, tonics, and of course, good old fashioned alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that kills me. <laughs> just I decided to do that last minute. I almost moved on from like just after listing all of those those drugs, but I decided to like animate her falling over, hitting the ground, <laughs> and that that gave me a good chuckle. Some people pointed out that some of these are actually opiates, and they're right. I don't know. I guess I just kind of wanted to list in more detail the other substances that could be abused if you want to chill out a little bit, you know, homie. Freedom is the ultimate goal of all red light women, after all, and all it takes is a little elbow grease, business set and not being Chinese. Yeah, so that's a, a little bit of a morbid joke, but a lot of Chinese immigrants to the American West tended to be enslaved as prostitutes and indentured servants, which isn't really better. But um, yeah, just kind of like a reference or a little note that not all prostitutes were there kind of off of their own fruition and free will and kind of like becoming like little uh, entrepreneurs. Like uh, some people try to paint the picture of prostitution as some people didn't have it is good. 
But yeah, that's what that's referring to. That's a real picture from, I think, San Francisco. Oh, I guess like another thing to note real quick before we move on. This video was hard because there are a lot of sensitive and sad parts about American expansion and racial inequalities surrounding these time periods that, you know, I want to make these videos funny and uh, educational while also paying respect to the bad things that happen. So that's kind of like the way I like to do it. I think you can make or uh, educate people on some of the more fucked up stuff that happens in funny ways and make jokes about it that aren't actually disrespecting the groups of people that are hurt by these events. So like there's other jokes that I had like that room of exotics where people who had a certain amount of African American ancestry or other colored ancestry would be put and segregated to. And then there's of course the Chinese prostitutes. There's the jokes about how the uh, natives were decimated by killing off bison. Stuff like that is like serious and sad. And I wanted to cover it and like show respect to it, but also do it in a funny way because I think that you can do that. It is possible to make jokes around topics like that that aren't hurtful. Do you have a roughly 10 by 20 foot cabin, which is plenty of room for you and your wife? And your 10 kids. So when I was writing this video or making this video, like a month ago, I made a post saying coming soon with the first image that I drew in this video. And uh, I got a lot of comments that got a lot of upvotes saying like, I can't wait to see what's measured in gumballs in this video. Or like, I can't wait to see like things like measured in like in weights of giraffes and just like wacky units because I do that a lot. And I realized, fuck, I didn't do any gumball measurements in this video. So I looked through to see where I had mentioned any kind of unit and threw in gumballs. So that's why I had gumball dimensions for the log cabin here that you saw yeah you get it but yeah that was a last minute edition that i totally forgot in the future more gumball shenanigans i promise also yeah easter eggs we got timmy back in action he's a, like a recurring character since the korean dmz video and then the pineapple helmet kid which would have happened around this time the pineapple craze in colonial america was still well and good in the late 1800s it's still kind of a thing today and you will get some visitors from time to time as one settler wrote every afternoon the rattlesnakes would would come out of their hidden dens in the walls and roof and sun themselves on the western windowsill. Have fun, Cinderella. That's a literal quote, by the way. Crazy that that shit happened. Also, this background took a dumb amount of time to draw. Each of these little dashed grasses were done by fucking hand. I don't know why I put that much effort into it, but I really wanted to solidify the like layers of sod that went into building this house. It took a while, but damn, at least it looks okay. For example, as a substitute for wallpaper, some families just plastered their walls with newspapers to help keep out drafts. So now you can add reading the wall to your list of fun home activities. But at this point, we're pretty much just one straight jacket away from an insane asylum. <laughs> I love that picture so much. I drew each one of these newspapers as well. But at this point, uh, we're although you can probably tell that I did mirror it. So like, I drew it up to here and then I mirrored it on the other side. So I didn't have to draw all of them. But that took a long time too. And then also this is Shields Green actually. If you remember, I talked about this. I use the same image in my Victorian London video when I was talking about the dangers in the upper class life in the Wild West. In that rhyme, I had like uh, except for the arsenic on your walls, lead on your dolls, corsets on your torso, cyanide in your photos, strychnine in your plastics, explosive in there. Fuck. Okay. I know the rhyme, but right now I'm messing it up a little bit. Anyway, this uh, is Shields Green, which has arsenic in it. It gave a really bright and radiant green that was very popular and deadly at the time. And because the Wild West was during the same time period as the Victorian era, uh, I used the same picture. Also, these two videos go hand in hand a lot more than you might initially think. Because they take place at the same time, a lot of people were moving away from like the hustle and bustle of the cities where the Victorian era was alive and well to get out to the Wild West. So it's kind of like for those of you who weren't like, damn, I wish I would lived in the Victorian era. You might have been someone who was like, damn, I wish I lived in the Wild West. And then this video is for you, kiddo. <laughs> so they kind of serve two sides of the same coin a little bit. While the Wild West was a rather violent place with high murder rates, it wasn't as if you had to dodge bullets every day like Hollywood would make you believe unless you're a native. There's a lot of study into, like, the violence of the Wild West, because it was violent. There there was violence in the Wild West. It wasn't as bad as Hollywood would make you believe. That's pretty much the general consensus, but as I found while researching this topic of violence, which I spent a long time doing, there's kind of, like, waves throughout scholarly history of, like, the argument being things were really violent, and then the argument being, it wasn't that bad. So, like, a common statistic 
statistic that's brought up is the highest murder rate in 1980 in a city was Miami. And it was like some number per 100,000 residents is the typical number that's used to measure these kind of statistics. And people pointed out how in Tombstone, Arizona, it was like hundreds of times that the murder rate was so fucking high. Yeah, I guess it was. You know, you have a couple of murders for like a, a town of 100 people. That's a ridiculously high murder rate. Your chances of getting murdered are pretty astronomical. But it still was like a murder or like two murders. So like comparing it on the scale of 100,000 residents is kind of like not a great comparison. Granted, there's no way you could accurately compare it because it was a small population. So there were areas where, or times in areas where violence was prevalent. And then there are other times and places where there wasn't a single murder at all. All in all, there was violence and there was gun violence. It just wasn't like a daily shootout in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you go around and terrorize a town and throw a bunch of people on train tracks and bash their head in, you know? Maybe a little bit of that, but not not a lot. Maybe it was for the natives, though, which is the point that I made here. Go on, take a sip, Alex. <sighs> Muscle spasms, huh? Sounds like something a sugar rush would do. No, it sounds like something a neurotoxin would do. And that's because this fun little potion was made up of wood grain alcohol, rosin, tobacco juice, sulfuric acid, hydrogen cyanide, and everyone's favorite rat poison, strychnine, which is making its third appearance on this channel. So you might look at this and think, how the fuck did they live drinking all that? And I also wondered that. And it's really hard to kind of like nail down the specific recipe behind this concoction that has popped up a lot in history and has been talked about a good amount. However, these ingredients were mentioned, but it is important to note that poison is all about dosage, right? Anything will kill you depending on how much of it you consume. So maybe there was a very, very small amount of hydrogen cyanide, kind of like apple seeds, or maybe it was, I, I, you know, I'm not exactly sure. I do know that some, some of these ingredients could be just reactants for a final product. So for example, wood alcohol or methanol can be extracted with sulfuric acid to form fermentable sugars. So it could have been that these ingredients were used in the ultimate production of this wonderful concoction that makes you feel like spiders and Indiana Jonesy and shit. Or they were just like really small amounts of it that were byproducts or, or something that maybe didn't kill you right away, but added to the whole, the fun experience. The main active ingredient here that got, that added a lot of these feelings for you was the strychnine, which was, oh, it's a rat poison for one. We talked about that in my 1904 Olympic marathon video. It was also used as a performance enhancer at one point in time and also used in various medicines that I talked about in my Victorian London video. So it is something that has been consumed and you didn't die immediately from. Still not great for you though. That's not a great metric to live your life by. But yeah, so that's that's kind of why I say like take these ingredients with a grain of salt because they were mentioned in the research that I did to be included in this cocktail by some sources, but to what extent they were present or to what reason they were there, not entirely sure. I don't know if there's a lot of info out there. I could have probably done more extensive research on this, but at the end of the day, there was a lot to cover and I had to move on and I was pretty satisfied with what I had. Oh my gosh, my my cough is gone. As you can see, he is now cured. And my vision, Jesus, I can see for miles. Uh, yes, another perk. Your vision shall be sharpened. Holy, I understand differential calculus. Uh, the, the tonic enhances the mind. And I'm fluent in Italian. Mamma mia, spaghetti and the Bala. All right, that's enough now, stranger. Oh my god, my bean is so big. Jeez, God, I fucking had so much fun with this video. God, all the voices I got to do. I got to do like an Arthur Morgan impersonation, a bunch of different hick Kansas accents, Dr. Delight, like circusy host accent, <laughs> fake Italian, all my favorite shit. Oh my god, all just in one little neat little package. Man, I, oh god, I had so much fun making this video. So uh, some of you might remember Dr. Delight is kind of a returning character. So I will admit I did fuck up a little bit writing this. I had used Dr. Delight in the past in my history of radiation video when I introduced the topic of uh, radium being marketed commercially in various products. I kind of like used this uh, old timey commercially intro where I had Dr. Delight pedal radium to cure you and like enhance the body and like all that stuff kind of like similar to this Dr. Delight this local medicine shit. 
show. I forgot when I did that that it was actually like my Blue Jay, the PNG, that was Dr. Delight. I gave myself a top hat, a mustache, and made it everything black and white. I had thought that I used this same circus host that I used in my freak show skit from the Victorian video. So when I was writing this skit, I was picturing me using him again, thinking that he was Dr. Delight. And it was actually me for like making a commercial. That was like the joke in the radioactive history video. So it's, it's a return of Dr. Delight. And I'm now making him officially Dr. Delight. Kind of like, I guess, breaking canon or whatever. But uh, yeah, I messed it up a little bit, but I still think that it's funny. So he's, uh, I, I love doing that voice too. It's so fun to do like a salesman British voice thingy. But yeah, so he, it's like a returning character. He's, they fell for that? Crazy, right? Getting their healthcare advice through performative entertainment? That's ridiculous. The people of the past were clearly way stupider than we are today. Guys, <laughs> the girl that I looked up um, TikTok healthcare advice, found a Dr. Mike video where he like breaks down some stupid ass medical advice on TikTok, stole this TikTok that he used to show like an example of stupid healthcare advice that we, we still do a modern day version of these like dumb advertising medical cure things today. It's just TikTok, social media, and people like me telling you guys what's factual and you don't actually do your own research and just kind of accept it, which you should never do. That's uh, that, that's what I'm making fun of here. This fucking girl, she, she tweeted a screenshot of this saying, like in all caps, like, I can never escape my mistake. <laughs> so she saw the video and me like using her and she knows that she was wrong. I just thought it was funny that she added me. <laughs> I, I kind of feel bad. But. Or you to go explore it yourself. Just look out for every Thing. Want more thrills? How about you go see a dead body? Or maybe watch them get made? Feeling vice-like? Why don't you try your hand at gambling? Uh-oh, looks like we got a sore loser. Where's the sheriff when you need him? No, oh, there he is. All in all, the hot- So there's a couple of things here. Um, one thing that annoyed me kind of. An example of like literally a tenth of a second shown I put a lot of effort into for what is ultimately barely up on the screen. I drew like a whole fucking mountain lion that you hardly see. I guarantee you most of you never even noticed that there was a mountain lion there. But I drew it! It shows up this one time! Will it ever show up again? I don't know. If I ever need a mountain lion I'll use it. But otherwise, this is the one time you get to see it. And you probably didn't even notice it. But I just threw a bunch of dangers in the wilderness out here. Which is honestly like the true danger of the Wild West kinda is just like the wildlife and the elements that you couldn't survive. Fucking bison, mountain lions, rattlesnakes. While there weren't many, there still were bandits. And while it wasn't as common as Hollywood makes it seem, there were still like native attacks or like Apache attacks. So like all of this is danger that you can experience in the West. And then also, it's funny because like I mentioned earlier that people were like thinking that I was like tributing Salmonella for that like Craig Cow thing, which was like totally a coincidence. I do know that there was a video video that Salmonella had made where he talked about a dead body that was like going through time being passed down for decades and decades um, people not realizing it was like a real body and people were using it as movie props and all that that dead body name was a former criminal named Elmer McCurdy he was I think like robbing a train or trying to like blow up a safe when he died and his body was taken and uh, preserved and uh, shown off for people to come and pay to see and when I was researching like things to do in the wild west i saw that one thing people did was like go look at dead bodies i saw that elmer mccurdy was one body and then researching that further i saw salmonella had made a video on elmer mccurdy so i'm like oh okay this is this will be funny i know a lot of people that watch my videos have also seen salmonella videos maybe they'll notice that this elmer mccurdy guy is a topic that salmonella had talked about so this will be kind of like a, a fun way to kind of like bridge that gap and say like like if someone ever like looks up this guy's name they might find his video and learn more about him or something but if there is a reference or tribute not a tribute but like a reference at all to salmonella in anything in my content this is the one time that it's happened and no one noticed it <laughs> Now they will that I told you guys, but I thought that was funny. I was like, no, like that, that cow thing was not a thing, but that was, and no one said anything about it. Uh-oh, looks like we got a sore loser. Where's the sheriff when you need him? No, oh, there he is. So, that's um a topic that I didn't dive into in enough detail. A lot of stuff I wasn't able to get into in more detail, but a lot of violence in the Wild West actually came from the local law enforcement, which is kind of ironic because they're usually portrayed as the saviors, but being the one guy in town with a gun and leverage, you have a unique position to take advantage of people. So there, there are quite a few recorded instances of violence being perpetrated by sheriffs and law enforcement. So this is like my way of like showing that that existed, <laughs> that it was a lawful area 
but not all law was necessarily protection. The Wild West. Boring and dirty, but gave us Val Kilmer's best performance. Five out of ten stars. <laughs> God, I, that was my favorite ad read that I had done. Also, notice my patrons. They're fuck. Notice my patrons. They're lovely. Thank you all so much for your support. I couldn't do this without you. You guys mean the world to me. I love you each individually. That comment that I made earlier in the video about parasocial relationships does not apply to you. I love you all equally. You're great. Thank you so much for supporting me. You lovely patrons. I love you. Yeah, that ad read is like my favorite one that I've done. And I was really hoping that people would watch the full thing because I thought like the ending of the video was really funny. Just like hit Alex going into like a mental breakdown having to go back to the mines where he belongs. <laughs> but yeah, this video was this video was great. I I had a lot of fun with this video. Um, and I drew so many new backgrounds while in the old videos I was or the most recent videos I had been reusing a lot of backgrounds. This time I started from scratch. Like I drew like this railroad background. I drew this uh like this Arizona desert background. I, I drew like you know like the, the fields, the, the plains. I drew like the sod house. I drew like armadillo ball deep. I drew all these pictures that were bigger dimensions than just like 1920 by 1080 for um oh, like this Enjoy. this portion of the video where I do all those panning shots and all that. So it was a lot of fun. A lot of work but I think overall really rewarding and uh, it made the video process some of the most fun I had for any video. And because I had been working on this thing for like four months or something, a lot of the jokes had started to dull for me a little bit. So as you notice, I wasn't laughing a whole lot while I was watching this. So I didn't know if I put this out, if people would find any of this funny because to me, not much of it was still funny. Once I like drew it and saw it, I it was funny again, but it also died off a little bit. Just seeing you guys in your positive reaction to the video and talking about your favorite parts in the comments and liking it and sharing it and watching it. I mean, it's doing really good. It went, it got like 16 on trending I saw once, which was nuts. Fucking crazy. It just, it was really nice to see that it was still good after I had like read it and recited it to my friends and girlfriends so many times but yes now that the video is done before i get to questions the penny so for those of you who don't know me when it friday is a user on discord and a patreon supporter of mine who suggested that i hide this little blue jay token that i had created in my victorian london video actually where i was talking about like the two penny sit up the four penny coffin or the two penny hangover one penny sit up four penny coffin i made these like blue jay pennies and i now ever since then hide them in the background of every single one of my videos as like little easter eggs for anyone that wants to kind of like hunt for them and so Cass is the first one that I saw to say that they found it and she proved where it was Cass do you want to let the class know where the penny is in this video 516 timestamp let's see if she's right uh oh there it is right there in the background I don't know if you guys can see that very well on like one of the signs of the building that I determined to be the bank I put a little blue jay penny that fit in really well with the color scheme and everything so it didn't ruin the shot but yeah, that's where I hit it. And keep in mind, I hide a penny in every single one of my videos. So you can find them in the previous ones as well. Anyway, that's where the penny was. This video was a blast to make. I know I spent a lot of time talking about it already and pausing a lot. But do you guys have any questions for me? What's my favorite aspect of the Wild West? That's a good question. I think, hmm, you know, while I did say that it wasn't like an uninhabited land, it still was a frontier and kind of something that had always interested me. Like growing up as a kid is the unknown, the yet to be discovered the next area to get to and we're at the point in life where there's not really anything like that on land anymore which was kind of a bummer but that always appealed to me in regards to stuff like the wild west or the american frontier just the expansion westward into regions yet to be seen or discovered by the american people that that part is interesting to me where it's just kind of like new beginnings for um settlers i think is interesting what was something surprising you learned about the west that you couldn't put in the video Hmm. Oh my gosh. Wait, I'm gonna have to like look at my notes because like the most interesting stuff I tried to include. There was a lot that I didn't include though, such as like why the Wild West is so famous and has like this certain image around it. There's Buffalo Bill's Wild West, which was a very popular show that toured the world that kind of like gave rise to a lot of these preconceived ideas and uh, ideologies, I guess, of what the Wild West is. I didn't touch on that at all. Again, my reason for excluding
saluting it is that's not like what life was like in the Wild West. That's what people thought what life was like in the Wild West. But basically it was like a guy who put together like a entertaining show that traveled and showing kind of like the Wild West. And it's kind of where the term came from. I can only imagine how annoying it would be living without modern lighting in old times. Yeah, I mean, amenities, you know, you don't have them. And that's kind of like an easy thing to harp on with a lot of these like how to survive videos. As you go back in time, you lose a lot of comforts you have today. That's unavoidable no matter what time period you go to. Ultimately, I could cover any time period and show why it would suck to live there because of illness and not clean and no TV and you can't watch Blue Jay videos. Stuff like that I could do, but it's kind of a uh, like low hanging fruit, but it's very true. It's a very good point. You lose amenities when you go back in time. But yeah, so that's the video. It's hard to do these director's commentaries after I had done a lot of this research and stuff so long ago, but all in all, it's my favorite video that I've done. I put a lot of heart and soul into it. I hope you guys liked it and um, I like to challenge myself artistically with every video, which was kind of primarily manifested in this cowboy sequence here. So hopefully you guys like that. And thank you guys for the support, of course, and joining the stream.